Hello everybody, welcome back. Carl again. Today I'm finally getting around to finishing my other side of LEDs for the Algae Derp Scrubber. As you can see, this is the completed version. Red LEDs, one on uh, one of the drivers, and the blue and whites, one on the other driver. Now I'm driving these from 12 volts, and they're running at 0 .40 amps, so almost half of an amp. And I've seen great success with my algae turf scrubber as far as the algae growth. So I'm just going to go through the procedure I use and how I went about installing these. Okay, so here is where I start. What I did was I measured out the algae turf scrubber screen. So this is the top up here. This is obviously then the bottom. And I just measured up approximately how far the water line was, which is about... Uh, it's about down here. The water line sits about here and then about an inch up. So just above the water line, I have the first row of LEDs. And then I just evenly spaced them between the bottom, the top of the water line and the top of the algae turf scrubber screen. So that way I have a nice spread of lights. I sat down for a while and I tried to figure out what pattern I wanted to use. Uh, and this is what I came up with as far as the white, red, and blue. And how I figured that out was I just kind of laid them out and tried to make sure that I had the best blend of color so that I had a nice full spectrum on every part of the algae turf scrubber screen. So now that I have my lines marked where I'm going to put the LEDs, this is the procedure I use to install them. Okay, so now that I have the LEDs, you can see that I have kind of this yellow tint. This one has a little red dot and this one has nothing. So the if I remember correctly, this one is red, this one is white, and then the plain one here is blue. So what I do is I'll just take the LED and I'll orientate it so that the spots here are on the line. Then you take a little Sharpie and then what you want to do is just mark out your pattern. So the way I then do it is I come just to the high side of the line so more towards this way and this way because what I found is if you drill it too close then when you put the LED down it doesn't quite want to work then you take a three millimeter or 0.11 inch bit and you drill this hole now remember it's aluminum so you don't need much pressure Once your holes are drilled, then what you do is complete that for all of them. Lay the LED, make your marks, etc. Once you have the base holes, you'll take a tap, and I like to just chuck that in the drill. The other thing I'll do is put the torque set in, so this adjustable clutch, all the way on low and then on low speed. And then what I'm going to do is run this through the hole to make threads. So what you want to do is make sure you're keeping your drill perpendicular to the surface so you have a nice hole, a nice level hole. Now I use the tap and die set that I have for these screws and I can't remember, I think these are 6 seconds. And now these will thread right into these holes and that's what I actually hold the LED in place. Now if you don't want to do that, you could buy the adhesive thermal compound. I am going to use some thermal compound, put a little dab on the back, spread it out of the LED, and then place this in there. So I'll show you that here coming up. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this finished. I'm going to draw all the holes, tap all the holes, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, now that I have all my holes drilled and they're all tapped, didn't take me very long at all. Just a couple moments. What I'm going to do now is clean this up. But before you clean it up, get yourself a template. So a piece of paper I have, I just wrote top. To reference the top, I'm going to put the two drivers on this side, just like the other one. And then these are all the LED colors. Now what I can do is take some flux remover, which is just alcohol and acetone mix, and a paper towel, and I'm going to clean this up. Now you can see I just took a, another clean rag and wiped it again 
because I was touching here. So what I found, if you work from the left to the right, since I'm right-handed, when I drag my hand across as I go, I'll do these three LEDs, and then I can clean, do these these LEDs and then clean and etc. That way I'm working off of the board. So I'll just get another clean towel and as I go I'll just continue to clean the area with my uh, flux remover so it's nice and clean. The other thing I'll do is I'll also get some and I'll just dab the edge of these LEDs before I put the compound on. Okay so according to my sheet my first LED is supposed to be a white one so I'll go ahead and, and get me a clean towel and I'll clean the white one up. In fact, you can see the yuck that came off of the back of that. And then I'll just give it a quick sec to air dry. Then I'll take my heat sink goop. Let me just clean that one more time. Put a little dab and then use my spreader method here and then now I'll just orientate the chip here Now I'm using uh, my old one as a template, so on that one I actually have positive facing down because remember the white and the blues get wired together. So now I can take my screws. Oh. So I just got these at the local Ace Hardware store, nine cents a piece, and they just fit, as you can see, right over top of the screw and insulates the bottom part of the head from touching uh, these pads because these pads here are live so if we set this in there you can see how it kind of works and it protects that from any short circuit so now that we have the heat sink goop on there we have our insulating washer we'll just put this screw in And what I found, if you just put the first one in and leave it somewhat loose, it allows you to get the other one lined up here. And then we can tighten it down. And I just realized, I think I got these washers that are a little too big, but that's okay. They'll, they still protect the head from uh, shorting these out. And it'll allow me to solder a wire on without shorting them. So I'm just going to finish this up for the other 11 LEDs, and we'll be back with you. All right, I just want to make sure I show you this here. You don't need much of this heat sink compound. You see there's just a very little dab on there. And once you spread this out, so now that you got it spread out, once you get it to that point, you line it up and you just plop it on the board there and once you tighten it down I want you to see this here once you line it up you see the heat sink there and there it actually oozes out so that's how you know you have good coverage you just need a little bit you're just trying to take up the imperfections but all of them have just a slight bit oozing out there so I just want to point that out all right so I'm gonna try to show you how I do this here I just have some stranded wire that I have laying around I have it soldered to the positive terminal so this is going to be all the reds. So I have a red here, 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 and here. So what I'm actually going to do is make this one continuous wire. So I'm going to run it along here, loop it up, roughly mark it with my finger, and then strip the wire right at that point. Now, if you're lucky, that'll stay where you just have a little bulge of wire. And what that'll do is that'll give you a spot to actually solder in the terminal without cutting the wire. Now sometimes what you can do is then re-strip this and then take a little exacto knife here and just slice that insulation out from the middle. Just 
just like that. And then what you're left with is a nice wire that you can now tin. And we'll just flow a little fresh solder on the terminal up there. And that's it. Now I do have my heat cranked up to 775 Fahrenheit because I was, you know, obviously the LED's job is to sink the current away. Now it's just a matter of laying the wires down so that I can get these to here and then over to here and then to my terminal in there. All right, so I'm going to keep on working on this and once I get the last one done and I'll get the driver mounted, I'll bring you back. All right, so I have finished wiring everything up. Again, the red red lights are on its own driver over here, and the white and blues are shared. Now, based upon my research, I probably only needed one driver, but I didn't want to overheat it. I got a pack of five, so I figured I'd just split them up. So I used red for one, white and blue for the other, and then uh, that way I can use, this actually has a PWM input, so I can uh, use different PWM signals to actually brighten and dim the LEDs. So what I've done is I've, uh, as you can see, just have the wires connected here. I have the power input just bridged over. This is running at 12 volts, so I actually have two of these panels. And then this cord runs off to a 2.1 millimeter connector where I have them tied together. So we'll just put my meter here on current. connect it up as you can see between the two of them I'm drawing 0.83 of an amp so this is actually on the amps jack here so just about an amp now my power supply is capable of 1.25 amps and it's just a little wall wart but nevertheless as you can see all the LEDs work fine it is very bright and dazzling all right, guys, well, there's the uh, completed product. As you can see, this is the one that we uh, just made. I uh, just have a piece of cardboard here to keep the light in. And I painted the sides of the aquarium blue as well as the bottom. So if I move this out of the way, you can see there's the uh, different color lights. I do have glass lids to try to min minimize the evaporation. But as you can see, and that's what it looks like. And with the both sets of LEDs, that is really good. Here is the algae, as you can see, it's growing really well with the LED lights. At the bottom is Chato, and that's what I was talking about. That was a little tiny, like, golf ball size piece of Chato. And you can see how it's really just exploded with that LED light growth. That's why in the video I did yesterday, I went ahead and did a blue 10-watt LED for my Chato tank, hoping that I can get that going. Uh, now that I have a good video of this, I'll go ahead and clean this screen and then get ready to wait for algae growth on both sides now. So anyhow, guys, uh, thanks again for watching. Appreciate you taking time. Please remember to hit the uh, thumbs up button. It really does help out a lot. And uh, if you have any comments or suggestions for me or anybody, please post them down below. It really helps everybody out. Uh, thanks again.